everybody is giving so much attention to, oh, this feeling comes and then I feel like this and then my mind is behaving like that. And I said, but I don't even really want to know, actually. I mean, it's nothing at all. If you think it is something, then you are registering that it's something and then you will keep on talking like this. It's nothing at all. Depends what you want. If you want peace or you want to sort of like have a good relationship with your mind. If you want a good relationship with your mind, then you have to get into some techniques and or you have to learn to love yourself. I said, forget about it. Throw yourself away. I mean, what is a nuisance? You know, I'm not talking now to people in a kind of kindergarten spirituality. I'm talking about someone who is really, you know, you've done you've done your term. You know, you've been an apprentice long enough. No? So it's time to really shed your skin. You want to shed your skin, or you want to just continue kind of growing a new skin, like a tarantula. You grow out of your skin, and then next thing you grow another one. So I just feel like this, you know. Over the years of being and sitting and talking with people, I see that there are very few people who are really up for this. It, it, it's a crazy thing to say, even up for it, like we're going on some great journey. It's not. Just simply be yourself. Not with a program. Don't give me an itinerary. Just to simply be yourself. No? Hmm? Because every somehow we're holding on to so many things. You have so many things in the pocket. So keep emptying out your pockets. Empty out your pockets. And people empty out their pocket. And then when they're putting the pocket back in, they put something back in the pocket. It's like this. There are some people, very few, they empty the pocket, they rip the pocket out, <laughs> they throw it out. Okay, I don't want to keep anything at all. But very few, few people can do this. In the life, I find, even among spiritual, so called spiritually, spiritual seekers, there are a bunch of jokers. There are a bunch of jokers. Everybody is just, you know, on a trip. On a trip. Just talk, 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 and this thing happened, and this thing happened. They're so. Such a joke. It's a joke. I don't want to disturb them in their joke. Let them go on and joke. For me, all I need is not to give so much time to that anymore. Takamuchi, like, I'm serious. So, what's holding me back? If you are the one who is serious, then neither joke nor serious is holding you back. Mm -hmm. It is the truth. I say these things, but people are so clever, and then their mind goes into this kind of advice or cleverness or something like that. But it's the truth, I tell you. Nothing is holding you back. If you really understood who you are, then these type of questions and dilemmas, they would not come. They cannot come for the truth. It's like space asking, "What you know? Um, what's holding me back?" Mm -hmm. Can space ask this question, "What's holding me back?" Well, and I ask you, holding you back from what? What's holding is the belief in the belief in in the thoughts. So. That's wind. That's not space. Mm -hmm. That's the voice of the wind, not of space. <clears throat> and the belief somehow. It's easy to take wind for space, <coughs> but when you dive a little deeper and you investigate a bit more, more you know, poignantly, you'll come to see the difference that there can be space without wind, but there cannot be wind without space. You will have to come to see and discern which is the greater one, the wind or the space. You see, wind is a movement, and space doesn't have to move. It doesn't move because it fills everywhere. It's there. So where can it move to when it's everywhere? It's infinite. Now these things, I, I feel more and more that people have to contemplate, meditate upon these simple things. Not many things. So about about this thing, you know, I understand perfectly what you're speaking. All the spiritual seekers in the world are having the same dilemma. How does it come about to be so global? Simply because of the identity, <coughs> with the the I, 
which has not really been undressed properly. I is the one thing we need to study because it is not fixed, it can change shape. I can be the infinite and I can be a terrorist. You know? And if you watch your eye, not watch some other eye, but watch your own eye, what is the what is the position it gets itself in? What is it pretending to be? What is it speaking as when it speaks? Then something gets catches a hold of it, you see. You see, and very quickly by seeing, you automatically dismiss because you see that you cannot be that, that you're observing a phenomenon. You know, this is true what I tell you. Is there anybody who will take my word seriously, is he? But they miss it and they go and they want to study all kind of books and do all kind of practices. See, if you catch hold of what I'm speaking, you see somehow I know that and yet there is this movement towards towards sometimes the identification with the with the eye all the time. Because you don't meditate enough. By meditating enough, I mean like in the inquiry, inquiry meditation. When the best meditation is just to keep on first starting, just with <coughs> without adding anything to yourself, start looking at what is here by itself, without adding anything, without picking up some other practice or something. Mm -hmm. Just start with yourself, you say, if I'm the only being in the universe and I only have me to know, I only have to learn about this universe through my own self, how will I go about it? How will I start with it? What will I have to go on? You have to start with your sense of existence because you know that you exist. <coughs> you know that you exist. And watch this existence. Begin to watch this existence right here. Don't go far out with the mind. Start. What is it what is it that that helps you to know that you exist? Just start like this. Don't pick up one don't change the question every five minutes. Just start like this. And you know so much power is developing out of this introspection. Not mental power, just a sort of as you begin to ask these questions and probe into them, hmm, the power to ask more questions begin to diminish. It's like it's being converted into, into spiritual power, force. And you start to see the superficiality of questions. Mm -hmm. and they burn up in your presence, just out of the authenticity of your looking. It just begins to burn up. Mm -hmm. How much further do you have to go? then somehow it's like knowledge begins to visit you, your consciousness, insights into things. But you will see that you don't have to get excited about them. Insights is God's way of enjoying God's Self through contemplating. Because when you see something uh, deeply, it brings such a joy. In When you have an insight, it's like a, it's like an, an unentanglement, and you feel the space of this inside your being, and there's a joy about it, you know. And you don't feel like your mind feels <coughs> diversified; it feels quite unified. You see. And you may start out with a question, but after a while, this question loses power. Mm -hmm. It was only the trigger to push you into the abyss of seeing. And quickly, quickly, you come into emptiness. Don't go through the jungle to go to emptiness, you see. Don't go to the jungle. Because why? You don't have to. The jungle's way is the mind. 
buying time to yeah. practice and projections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learned somewhere along the way to just put more attention onto the body sensations and everything. Which brings you to what? <coughs> well, which mostly brings me to pain. And then the weakness of the pain. You cannot stop with pain because mm -hmm. pain is not uh, natural. It's not. The, it's not sentient. It's not the source. Mm -hmm. It's not a phenomenon. Pain is there because consciousness is there. The body is there. But pain is weakness also. Mm -hmm. You know, you are trying to find something. You no, know? the most important thing you are trying to find yeah. hmm? cannot be something that just appears and disappears. Mm -hmm. It has to be the thing that watches even the appearance and the disappearance. But nobody wants this. Because it's you. But I do. I want it. Then stop watching for things that come and go. If something comes mm -hmm. and goes, let it come and go. It's natural for it to come and go. Yeah. You see? But you must find this which doesn't come and go. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can find it phenomenally? This awareness that um, in which everything happens. How how come that um, I forget that darshan happens in this awareness, and I think I'm darshan and only darshan sometimes. We have many different answers for that because <coughs> you can say out of habit, <coughs> out of practice, out of repetition, out of conditioning. Of education, you can say all these things. I am not sure if it's because of that. I am not sure if it's not just a kind of trick. So because even this question, this statement you make, it's, it's, the mind. it's kind of also not true. Awareness is not complaining about these things. The, the awareness itself, which is what you are, you must come to see. You must come to experience and confirm that you are the awareness itself. You have to do this experientially. Because only when you have seen this, you know, when you have seen this through the eyes of experience, then the rest can begin to diminish in power. Because if you don't confirm it as experience, there is always doubt. But I have, Muji. Well, I mean, I've had moments. You being what? Well, the one moment was... No, you being what? Who had the moment? There was a knowing. There was just... Why is it was? Yeah, why why, why, why was? Why is yeah. it was? A knowing of what? Knowing that, that I am everything and that... I don't think that this is the quality of awareness to know that it is everything. This is, this is still knowledge. Awareness doesn't have to know it is everything. It doesn't know anything to then say, I am everything. It's much more innocent than that. That's when you've picked up knowledge. Somebody tell you you should be the same as everything. But in order to be the same as everything, you have to start being something. Then you can say, I'm the same as everything, because you become something. What were you before you become something? Are you not the awareness that watch the sense of something? Mm -hmm. This is a thing, you know. And we have to somehow, we as the awareness, have the capacity to identify with our projections and the body and the vital force. It's, it's, it's something that happened. And so our essential nature seems to get mixed with the projections and the conditioning and so on. It seems to. Because I've found it doesn't really get mixed. It can only appear to get mixed through the dreaming, through the Maya dream. It seems to get mixed through the belief that it is that. And then it gets converted from its purity into this sort of um, fragmentation and, you know, confusion or something come like that. But your question is more that you are molested by the feeling that you keep forgetting who you are. Yeah. So it cannot be known phenomenally. Let me ask you a question, you see. <clears throat> it's like somebody gave you the name John or Jane. 
before you had the name, you were there. In order to embrace the name, consciously, deliberately, or unconsciously and spontaneously, your consciousness must already be sufficiently ripe or mature in order to remember or hold the impression of a name. So it must have been that. Because as an infant, you can't tell a child who is two weeks old, your name is George, don't forget it. Because they don't even know who the hell you are, particularly. So only until the consciousness has ripened to study sufficiently that it can register the name, then the name can form some imprint in the consciousness. And once this, once this name come and settles, it's accepted by the consciousness, it never forgets it, you know, you know, except in deep sleep. But as long as the consciousness is present, it holds the name somehow. Now, <clears throat> you're going about your business, okay? Are you remembering your Atma? Okay, this is not the name your parents give you. Say you're a Jane or something. Uh, you have to remember. And oh, sometimes I forget I'm Jane. Sometimes I forget I'm Jane. I wish I could always remember. You don't forget. What's the difference? Why don't you forget? Why don't you remember? For, for, why don't you forget and think that you are, you know, Susanna or something? Why? Why does because it happen? Because it's neutral. Because there's nothing invested. That's why, probably. You don't have the feeling that you can forget it or remember it. Yeah. So it's just there. You see? But now you feel somebody told you, Oh, you forgot yourself and you know, you must try and remember yourself. And then it becomes a struggle. It's like intention is born, I must remember myself. And the minute you think I must remember myself, then you find that I'm forgetting because these two they got together. <clears throat> remember the name. You don't have to remember the name. You don't <coughs> you have no doubt about the name. Hmm? And this name is not even original to you. Somebody thought of it. Mm-hmm. You see, I really want you to hear this today, and I don't want you to ask me any other question apart from this question, because everything is in this magic key I'm showing you. You don't have to remember your name. You don't have to remember it. Now I offer you a new name. You have to kind of remember it for a while, because other people call you the old name, and you also are calling yourself the old name unconsciously and whatever it is. So you have to consciously remember the new name. And at a certain point, it becomes. Hmm? It's like <clears throat> every now and again, a country changes its currency. Before here, we had uh, pound, shillings, and pence. Okay. <coughs> Italy had lira. Spain had pesos. They all changed and became euro. In the beginning, everybody not sure what oh, how does this money work and it's so crazy. We don't want this money and la 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 la. No, but gradually become accustomed to it. How you become accustomed to it? Because each day you have to go and use this money, and each time you keep referring to the old money to find out the value of the new money. Because you had value with the whole money. You understood that. Hmm? So you become accustomed to it. You also became accustomed to the name. And because the name was associated with I, which is an intuitive sense of yourself, <coughs> the name wasn't forgotten. The name became synonymous with I. You say, I am John. You see? Mm-hmm. You never forgot it. Mm-hmm. <coughs> the I is greater than John. The I is greater than Susan, or Atma, or Muji, because the I represents consciousness. You see? And that is more neutral than John or, or Susan, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Hmm? But you give the second title. I am John. If you say I am John, then I becomes kind of John, in a way. Mm. But the feeling I itself is only consciousness. Consciousness is saying I am John. Mm. When consciousness knows I am I, mm. and John appears in me, when it understands that, not tell other people about it, but understands that, <clears throat> then all the 
mm. misunderstanding can begin to deconstruct it begin to break up mm. automatically not you are taking things brick by brick it just begins to fall away something happens no when you're touched profoundly like you fall in love then everything begin to change your chemistry begin to change everything begins to change you're not know, doing anything deliberately this is the power mm-hmm. itself the power of seeing if a man can kiss you and set you on fire how will it be if god kiss you you see allow yourself to be kissed don't try and kiss yourself i'm talking using your mind mm-hmm. <clears throat> throw yourself into the fire of the opportunity mm-hmm. these are things i can tell you but i cannot tell you how to do it because i have to speak to something which is ancient in you primal inside you like when a baby is born you bring it up to the nipple you don't have to give it lessons how to suck a nipple it's instinct in us it's instinct in us to suck at the nipple of god if you ask in how because you use your mind too much and then you have to uh, how do you do it and then you have to turn something which is primal into a technique you see so really go through life not relying on on the name but only on the eye you must ask yourself who is relying on a pranay <clears throat> or on the name you know catch him right here you know don't make um, installments on this on this um, slaughter mm-hmm. you have to slaughter him here everything is here to finish it you see <clears throat> it finishes and it seems to start and finish it again don't half finish it your looking is so powerful it can finish it you see <coughs> it cannot finish the momentum may keep on going for a while but each time you finish him the momentum is weakened it will come again and a fresh confidence will be there to deal with it and gradually just like it came gradually it sometimes goes gradually you see sometimes an instant of seeing is so powerful that uh, the ghost is blown for a very long time but gradually coming back in and constantly being swept and you know destroyed through the intelligence and true seeing mm-hmm. and this is what's happening with you it's happening to all of us no you're seeing and something is is losing it's losing its vital force the, the arrogance is losing its vice its vital force mm-hmm. ignorance is losing losing its support and so increasingly peace peace is left with you and finding that nothing holds us you know just mostly we we gradually you stop telling the story of your mind because the mind is drawing some oxygen from these things a bit not that you should be afraid of my i don't want to put mind something you're afraid of you know because uh, there's nothing actually but because of the investment that's gone into it <clears throat> it seems to have a life of its own but it really doesn't have a life of its own but you have to prove that with experience you see you know the thing in the, in the world in which you know like um, um since india I've been left in a place of i don't know you know like i talk about something and i say and then i realize it it doesn't hold me like it's like i don't know you know there's nothing i i know for sure there's a certain mechanism within you <clears throat> which becomes redundant maybe a capacity to to keep projecting will get uh, gradually exhausted and it just won't be able to start again it's like if you get some some chickpea or something and you boil it that it's just not going to germinate doesn't matter what soil you put it in what baby food you put in whatever thing it's not going to go because you have burnt it to the core you see yeah. <coughs> <coughs> 
Hmm? That's what's happened? To what? You know, like, they still... Well, look, if it has happened, you wouldn't be talking about it. You just no, forget about it. No, but what I'm it. saying is, like, I talk about things, and then I just, like, everything just, just goes, you know? It doesn't stay, it doesn't hold my attention, doesn't hold me for very long. But it's holding you for some time. Huh? But it's holding for some time. Well, sometimes it's just a few, <clears throat> few seconds. Like. Yeah, well, don't pay any attention to that. It does, that's not really that important. It's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> you know, I like Maharaj's statement when he said, I leave my life, you know, I leave my life alone. Let it run its course according to destiny. I remain true to who I am. You see? It's a distinction, no? I leave my life to unfold according to its destiny. I remain as I am. It's very much in this statement uh, <clears throat> a difference, isn't it? It's almost as though your terrestrial life is going by some. It's like a story. It belongs to the world. It's doing its thing. Mm -hmm. But independent of that is the consciousness that you are, in whose presence the story of you seems to play out. But it's not particularly involved in that story. If the consciousness involves itself in the story, then it combines itself with the story and then becomes that story. <clears throat> you have to be so, you know, it, it's like, what you are is so great. It is just like this. Because you have to be able to recognize this kind of life, this kind of projection, like a, like on a screen, a life that's going. It's not quite just like on a screen, because <clears throat> you feel it in your blood. Yeah. You know? So it's not like it's just out there. <clears throat> but you see things happening, your senses are functioning in this body, but this body and the senses are on the screen somehow of the consciousness. And this screen is invisible. <clears throat> it's like space. Every movement is happening on the screen, but the screen is invisible. The screen is like space. And what d discerns the screen is the intelligence that knows that I'm perceiving this, and the very fact that I'm perceiving this is on the screen of consciousness, you see. <clears throat> you have to be able to 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 do that. It, I don't know if the word to do that, mm -hmm. but this is what is happening actually. This is a correct I've seeing. Actually, really. I've actually discerned that one time in India, not this time, but the year before. I was looking at all the people in satsang, and I could see that the only thing that was alive was their eyes, and they were all fixed on you. It's funny. Well, yeah, I'm not going to... The face actually is true. The face is really the index of the intelligence somehow. Mm. We're having a relationship with the face, actually, through the face. <clears throat> it's communicating. This is, this is what I said. This is a real Facebook, because everything is somehow there. Yeah. When you meet, it's a face-to-face -face thing. You know, mm -hmm. the intelligence communicates. The light of the consciousness is seen in the eyes. Right. But actually, <clears throat> as the consciousness become more refined, refining means to be free from the influence of the mental projections. Even the body itself, yeah, you know, because body is also consciousness. Mm -hmm. The body also begins to have a kind of translucency, a transparency in it. But you have to somehow, <clears throat> I don't know how to put this, because even as we talk, we can use this talk, this present talk as an example. It's going on by itself. Yeah. It's going on by itself. Interacting is going on. It's guided by a deeper intelligence. <coughs> In fact, this guidance is actually coming out of emptiness. Emptiness is the background of all of it. It's the core ground of all of it, somehow. This is this is what is this is what is the. Do you think, Muji, I need to just really take time by myself somewhere for an extended period of time? Would that be good for me? You, my dear, don't even exist. Yeah. Well, okay. Well. Just. You hear it. Hear it. Yeah. That which is talking about, you know, what I need to do on it, it doesn't exist. This is coming from your mind. You the self are here, you know. 
you the self are here. Okay. You the self is here. It's, okay. it's the self that I perceive. You know? And when the self speaks with itself, it can relax, you know, it can, it can enjoy itself. When it begins to speak in terms of like the mind, like what do I need to do and stuff, as it, what you need to do, you don't exist. What are you talk? Who are you? Where are you? Where the hell do you come from? You know, you don't exist. This one doesn't exist. It is because there is still some faith and some trust in this uh, notion of yourself that keeps on, you know, perpetuating. Do something. Yeah, mm -hmm. suspending, postponing, yeah. trying to something. And this is just, you know, in a sense, <clears throat> it has been very wearisome for you. It sucked all your vital forces, draining. It's like a vampire energy. Mm -hmm. hmm? This mm -hmm. thought, in your case, mm -hmm. and this is the grace of it, in fact, mm -hmm. because because at a certain point, you are not going to be able to stand it at all. Yeah, it just it's a testimony to the greatness of your being, actually, that we can tolerate this this thing. You know, mm -hmm. this type of the stupidity of the mind, of the ego keep going it's just keep on going it gets more absurd actually in all of us it's becoming more absurd the more you are recognizing who you are the more absurd your 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 ego becomes kind of crazy and stupid because you're looking at people out on the streets who are probably very much involved in their belief in themselves and they seem to be flourishing they look so bright huh and you look at yourself you think my god you know i feel so bloody drained yeah. But yeah. it's because somehow there is still, <clears throat> at least you are advanced enough to suffer. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, you're conscious of your, of the ignorance mm -hmm. and 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 how ingrained it is, and you can see that it's not what I am. You see, yeah. so something inside this this fight has to happen because this fight is the, is like the precursor. It's it's it has to go before the liberation is. Burps it out, you know. This is what happened to all of us. No? Sometimes we go through this period, and you become very sick, or you become, you know, a little bit depressed, and so on. Because you know, you, you're in a war with the with the dragon, you know, mm -hmm. and you're pushing it out. Something. That's one way I can put it. I don't want to be yeah. too absolute about it. But at a certain point, you know, you have to give it up, and it is speaking these words. It comes up, you know. Yeah. So all of what I need to do is I need to spend more time myself. No, to hell with that. I said, I don't recognize this one. This I don't recognize. You are recognized. Mm. You are the self. But you can be, as the self, feel strangulated by the concepts which are still somehow, by something, I don't know, still being given some tenancy. Like that. So, you know, like, <clears throat> more and more often, it's like I see life just happens by itself and it doesn't happen to anyone. And it happens like a, some kind of miracle, no? Like, um, like everything happens just by itself. And then at, at times I get involved with what's happening, but there are times it's clear that it just happens in me, in this emptiness. And you know, there's sometimes I don't know the two, the two seem to be happening. You know, sometimes I wonder how people, you know, they just appear from nowhere. I don't, I don't know how they appear. It's like a well, we should be pretty much used to it by now <clears throat> that it cannot be figured out. It cannot be figured out. So you know, everything is in place. Everything is in place. It's just that you have to have the eyes to see it. That's all. Everything is in place. But if you have projections and intentions, then you'll see through the eyes of your intention, and you'll miss what is being offered by life spontaneously for you. That's what we talked about yesterday, Darshana. You see, because everything is in place, all the blessings are in place. I see people around me who are miserable. They are kind of miserable. Oh, I want to stop this in my mind. Oh, I just want to stop this. And I look at the life they're living. The life seems fine. I said, but wait a minute. We we drink coffee together. We go for a walk. Everything seems fine. <clears throat> Yet, you are suffering your existence. You see? You're suffering your existence in your head. Because somehow you're plugged into that software. 
you took that program and you're interpreting this a program of interpreting what is there because the life is just there and <clears throat> if you have an intention for something it's like I ask you go in the room there and just get me my red purse from the chair you go inside you come you bring in a red purse I ask you you know what I mean like you know are they drinking coffee in there you don't remember anything you know is the lights on you don't remember nothing because your intention focuses <clears throat> and becomes very loud so you don't you you blur out everything else if you have an intention to do something you don't really see what is there the one who sees the one is one has no intention has no desire so I'm talking then everything is just clear it's like it's clear it's not that they're picking up or focusing on anything yeah. they can move through they could move to a carnival and not perceive anything has happened so from talking with you you know mm. um, I can see that like sometimes you know when you get a feeling you know a feeling of feeling like not energetic or a bit depressed or something like that you think it's you but in that moment you don't you don't look at inquiring whether that feeling is just a feeling appearing in what you are as a result of inquiry you become less and less to even need to inquire into those feelings you just be able to just drop them let them be there because sometimes you give them the label you know depression and you make it into a big deal mm. And it was and then nothing. You believe yourself to be a somebody. Yes, it's very easy. Is that not, is that what happens? It well, you know, just believe yourself to be a somebody. I mean, we're doing it from moment to moment. You know, we're adding on to the account. <clears throat> There's an account, a sense that we start our day feeling like we're someone. You end your day feeling like you're somebody. You live your day living like you're somebody. You see. But you who are in satsang are having more breaks in the day when you can question these things and just sort of like blow the cover on all of it and see through all of it, come back to space. You have got to be able, with the amount of satsangs and the contact you've had, to be able to bring things back to emptiness again by yourself. You have to do it. And not in five minutes. To look and to, to bring, it, bring it in. This power you have, otherwise you're wasting your time. And then there are times where you can't, you know, like going back to that feeling of feeling depressed, that you can't see that the depression happens or the feeling depressed happens in you. That you're the witnessing it, you know? Like, I do. If you pay attention to anything, it begins to grow right in front of your eyes. If you pay attention to anything, it begins to grow and become meaningful right in front of your eyes. If you don't pay any attention and keep your attention in the heart, in the si art of silence, everything becomes silence. Then even the manifest world becomes unmanifest. That's, I think, there's still fear here. Hmm? We have fear still? Well, fear <clears throat> of what can be here when there's nothing unmanifest. Yes, you see, this fear can only come from the mind, yeah. because as mm -hmm. soon as you realize who you are, yeah. when you bring your attention back, your inquiry back onto yourself, yeah. and come back, reduce yourself to nothing yeah. through the seeing again, mm -hmm. and experience the nothing of nothing, then you will see this idea. I wonder what will happen if everything yeah. dissolves. Then there is fear. That's only speculation. Yeah. That's not experience. Yeah, that. Inquiry puts you in the experience of that. And when you're in the experience, I've not heard anybody complain, Oh my God, there's nothing here. Oh my God, oh my God, there's nothing here. I don't see anybody running around like headless chickens in that state. I have found that everyone is completely happy. Because it's not what the mind is offering. It's not what the mind is projecting. It is something completely, entirely missed by the conditioned mind. The excellence of the, the self. The purity of the self. You see? So you have to each time baptize your mind into the understanding over and over again so that you don't leave any corner unswept. Don't let the dust build up. And this dust is, oh, what's going to happen if, uh, if I don't have control? What's going to happen if, you know, <clears throat> if I lose my, my power and uh, I lose my mind? How am I going to cope? This is dust. This is not truth. The truth is, you don't need to know what's going to happen. Nothing is happening, actually. What's going to happen comes smacks completely of the mind. 
You don't need to know what's going to happen. This is an obsession of the deluded consciousness. Because when you're here in your original state, you are completely abandoned of any of these ideas. Like a child is not thinking about, I wonder if my insurance is going to be expensive by the time I get... Mm. You're just, you are life. You're not living life. Mm -hmm. When you're living life, you have a lot of problem. When you are life, you have no problem. This is the difference. Mm -hmm. When one sees, you see, but I am life. This is not me and my life. This is just the added excesses of the mind. You, you are life. You are life. And I see, I see that, Muji. I see how uh, life adjusts itself to exactly what needs to then be in those situations. It is just this: the only thing that is smart enough, not the personal mind or intellect. Yeah. Even smart is a playful way of saying it. It is completely perfect. Yeah. Everything is. We let's not even go there with our human mind. You know, let's not be even arrogant enough mm -hmm. to even think that we can work that out. Because it's like magic mm -hmm. to the mind. It looks like magic sometimes. It is magical. Yeah. It is magical to the mind. It's true. It is just joy to the self, mm -hmm. but it's magic for the mind. All the satsang can do is to scrape you out, to scrape out, scrape out all that stuff. Cholesterol. <laughs> scrape out the cholesterol out of the artery of the being. Yeah. Let the thing flow again. This is what the doctor told me. You have to get rid of your cholesterol. <laughs> I said, well, my cholesterol is uh, less dangerous than yours. <laughs>